Hey everyone, this is Spacepan. I have some quick thoughts that I wanted to get out there, because, uh, it was on my mind. <laughs> so earlier today we had the Gay Triarchy podcast with, um, Logan McCree and Chadwick Moore, and it was a great conversation. It was a lot of fun. And one thing that we had touched upon, um, kind of a little bit was this idea of the spiritual and um both logan mccree and chadwick moore have um, a little bit more sympathy toward christianity and i don't <laughs> um no we didn't really delve into this topic in any detail but just coming away from the conversation i had a couple of thoughts on the matter that i thought um well as long as it was on my mind i, th I figured i would um make a video about it so when I was in philosophy, at one point, um, I had a course where the professor was talking about this idea of um, kind of like this really strict materialistic sort of um, empiricism, where you just see things that are concepts that you encounter as bundles of perception, right? Like, you see a can, and like it has these different qualities, and each of those qualities can be isolated and then seen as their own thing. And then it's not until you bundle all of the qualities of that thing, right? Like its firmness versus its softness, how shiny it is, what color it is, how tall, how wide, where in space it is, at what time it is there, you know, all these kinds of things. Uh, how hollow versus how solid it is, all of these aspects you bundle together, and then that is the essential nature of these things that you are encountering in reality. And you can apply this to a can of soda, to some nail clippers, to a computer screen, to a microphone, to a laptop, to any number of things, um, such as the things that I'm looking at right now. Those are all things I listed. Literally anything, including like a baby, right? A baby, you know, it, it has like a quality of like, there, there's like a softness to their skin. You can see the shape of a baby. The baby makes certain sounds, you know, and, and but ultimately you can isolate every single one of the qualities that you are perceiving empirically. And then all of that is just simply added up. And then, oh, there it is. That's a baby, right? <laughs> and then things that have some characteristics of that thing you know, they, they share some similarity to it. Like, if you see a perfectly realistic baby doll that is not, in fact, a living, breathing baby, but it looks perfectly exactly like one, you, you still have some level of, like, an emotional response to it that's similar to there being an actual baby, right? And what a lot of people do when they're very religious is they look at this very materialistic approach to reality, and they say, well, because you can take that thing and then deconstruct it and then, you know, like, like deconstruct it in that way that's so passive and so like unemotional, all, all you're saying is that everything is just all those things added up, which is nothing. And therefore you have no meaning, you have no purpose, you have no spirit, you have nothing to live for if you don't have this greater transcendental spiritual sense of the thing, right? Beyond all of these bundles of perception. And he had a really interesting, you know, response to this argument, which is that, no, absolutely not. You know, what, what, what makes reality so amazing and beautiful and what an atheist person or a strictly materialist person can take away from these experiences is, in fact, what is called the spiritual, the transcendental, the, the, this idea of valuing things and, and that sort of kind of otherworldly imparting of value the the fact that you have these bundles of perception that add up and yet your emotional and spiritual response to it evokes that in you that is a testament to the beauty of reality itself and the beauty of the material world and the beauty of all these things and the beauty of our conceptual framework as people so when you present this to like an atheist and say you don't care whether or not your baby is making soft cooing noises out of comfort or whether it's screaming in unbelievable pain they say no no yeah that baby is a bundle of perceptions but i live and die upon whether or not that bundle of perceptions is happy or sad and as it grows into a child and then into adulthood i want it to have expressions and experiences of 
happiness and of beauty and of experiencing the world and of being free and of all of these virtues. And my point is that it's one thing that the atheists, the atheist community in general, has really got right is they look at the wonder of the universe and the mystery of the universe and this unpacking of all of the things in reality and to look upon all that to dissect it and to analyze it and to to deal in it to to be in it and then to, to come away from that and then say oh well that's all nothing because god doesn't exist only religious people say that. It's only people who are deeply religious who say, oh, well, without God, all oh, that's meaningless. No, no. It's one thing the atheists got right is they say, no, I do experience real emotions. I do care about things. I am a person. I, I do have a motive for being and I do feel these things and I do you know, appreciate art and appreciate the, 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 these higher forms of, uh, of appreciation, these higher ideals of beauty and of truth and of, of freedom. And the fact that I experience them is how I know there's something like beautiful in reality. And it doesn't have to be a theological argument. It doesn't have to be part of any religion. And this is something that I think divides the religious versus the non-religious. All humans, virtually all humans, are recognizing the value of existence and the value of being in existence and, and the finding things that they prefer versus don't prefer and pursuing those things. And in their own actions, they are implying such values. And basically, religious people, because God is the center of their universe and the center of their conceptual framework for making sense of all of this mystery and all of this shit that's just thrown at us, to them, when God is taken away, the best way for them to empathize with the religious person is to assume, oh, you just don't see any truth or beauty or freedom or virtue in reality. But if we're truly honest with ourselves, do you legitimately believe that that's where the atheist is coming from? I think that insofar as a religious person acknowledges this in a non-religious person, what they may say is that's just an atheist um, perceiving and understanding God in their own way, but they just haven't quite admitted to God's existence. And I think that this is kind of in line with these approaches to religion that are very deistic, that base themselves in science and in logic, and make sorts of arguments that culminate in justifying the existence of some sort of God, not necessarily... Um, like a humanist god not necessarily a god that is engaged or a god that actually cares about humanity but some sort of creator and what a lot of christians do is they'll borrow these arguments and then use that to leapfrog into justifying the assertions of their particular religion which is frankly ridiculous because this deistic conception of the god is 100 percent at odds with your abrahamic god so, and then, you know, as far as the deistic versus atheistic perspective, the agnostics belong to atheism. If you, if you say maybe in the face of all of these questions, you're an atheist, you're a weak atheist. A strong atheist is a person who asserts that God does not exist. In regard to a deistic God, I am a weak atheist. In regard to an Abrahamic God, I am a strong atheist. And the reason I can hold both of those positions simultaneously is that the extra baggage that comes with the Abrahamic God really flies in the face of the deistic God, right? Because this deistic God, all we really know about it is that there's no reason for it to be concerned with human affairs. And there's no reason for it to even exist, quote unquote, in any sense in which the term existence is meaningful. So if I'm going to acknowledge the spiritual and transcendental value of words themselves, then I can't rationalize that along with any sort of assumption or any sort of um, entertainment of this idea that such a God exists. So I wanted to throw all that out there. Now, to bring it into another topic here, most of people who self-identify as atheists are not irreligious. They do have a religion. Their religion is statism. 
And the way I define religion is that it is a belief system that is centered on a faith-based axiom. Now, I understand that some people have definitions of faith that um, are actually quite radically different. I was listening to one of Claire Cause's um, uh, conversations um, with, I think, Church of Entropy, and they, they were working with a definition of faith that's very, very radically different from how I conceive of it, um, which is interesting. I'm going to be kind of looking deeper into that just to see if maybe there's anything anything there. But for me, what faith is, is to believe without seeing, which means to hold a belief without the need for empirical or rational justification. And the idea is that in Christianity in particular, once revelation occurs, right, once we have this apocalypse where God reveals himself, faith is no longer possible because at that point you have seen God and you've seen the truth. And to then begin to believe after this revelation occurs is not a matter of faith. It's a matter of empirical, logical evidence, right? So in order to have faith, you will need to have it before the end times, before the revelation, before all of that starts to really kick off. Once God is revealed to you in a really p empirical, undeniable way that you experience, you can no longer have faith. So what you have is a faith-based claim, and it's an axiom. It's the, the starting point of a logical argument. And you start with that point, and then using that, you then build upon it in order to create an entire framework, which is theological. So when it comes to the Abrahamic faiths, they have certain faith-based axioms. God exists, God wrote a book, and the book has these things in it, and then everything in the Bible is supposed to be taken to be true, to be literally true. And from there, you build your faith and you build a conception of what it is God wants you to do or to be or to think. And you try your best to live that sort of a life and to use that wisdom as a guiding force in your life. Now, when it comes to the, um, the, the quote unquote atheists, most of them are statists. And statism is a religion because it's based on a faith-based axiom that a monopoly on arbitration is quote unquote necessary for human survival. The reason this is a faith-based axiom is because no human being can possibly look over empirical reality and come to that conclusion. Not because there's the evidence and counter evidence, but simply because as a formal matter, as a matter of fact, we never know that that is fundamentally, essentially the case. It always might be the case that this is something that has never been tried yet, or needs to be tried in a certain circumstance, or needs to be tried under particular conditions. And the idea that a government is necessary, it requires, it requires a definition of what is necessary. And most status can't even tell you what this term actually means. What is the litmus test for necessary? This is something that status do not agree upon. They all have different metrics for determining how a society should be. And they're using this faith-based belief in order to impose their own personal vision of that which is necessary. And of course, in their own vision, you know, they, they always end up somewhere rather comfortable. No statist is imposing a vision of that which is necessary where they acknowledge that they are the one to be sacrificed or the one to be disadvantaged, which is rather convenient. I'll just leave it at that. It's rather convenient. So if you're somebody who first acknowledges that anarcho-capitalism is an ideal, even if you don't believe it's achievable, if you believe that is the ideal... By my definition, by my standard, you are basically an anarcho-capitalist. Now, if you're somebody who believes that it's not that, that, that it can never be achieved, then you're a statist. But if you believe that it's conceivable that there's a certain series of conditions and a certain time period and a certain way in which we can create an anarcho-capitalist society, then you're you're an anarcho-capitalist. You know, even if you're not someone who would quote unquote push the anarchy button to end the government in a blink of an eye. 
by that definition, I think you would still be an ANCAP. And I think that a lot of people look at anarcho-capitalism as this sort of ideal, but they're uncomfortable with the larger challenge of saying, okay, if this is our ideal, this is what we're approaching, how do we get there? The only honest answer to that question is, I don't know. I don't know. Here's a few ideas. Here's some directions you can go in. Here's a couple of things we can use. And that's a very rich and very interesting and very diverse conversation. And all of that occurs under the larger umbrella of anarcho-capitalism. So it goes back to um, one of my absolute favorite quotes from Stefan Molyneux. He was responding to Sam Harris and he says, an atheist who is a statist is just another theist. And I absolutely believe that's true. I, I absolutely hold to that. Statism is the one true religion. And I believe that most people who are Christian, Muslim, whatever, any religion you can name, if they are not also an anarcho-capitalist, they actually have two religions. And if you want more um, of what I think on that topic, I made a video called The Reverse Pastel's Wager. Um, and then also I expanded upon it a little bit in um, uh, God's a Bitch and Men Tells the Devil. Those two videos expand a little bit upon what I'm working on here. But mostly what I wanted to, to discuss was just this idea that there's no meaning or, or nothing good, that you can't have a meaningful life without that which is spiritual and then therefore religion. I wanted to kind of throw a couple of wrenches in there. So... Anyway, those are just some thoughts I want to get off my chest. I um, hope you guys found this interesting, and have a nice day.